Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. I was going to do the continuation, possibly the finishing of the uh, War in Heaven, War on Earth. But you know what? This fits right in with it, War on Earth. There are those that will tell you that Paul was not an apostle, that he was a fake and uh, to do that, well, they have to deny the book of Second Peter, and they have to deny that the book of Acts is, you know, they have to deny it. They have to tell you that the book of Acts is wrong. Then, of course, they've got to deny all of Paul's writings. So, the, Luke was considered the author of Acts. I don't know of any Bible scholar that would disagree with that. So basically, the people that deny Paul, you know what their gospel is? Matthew, Mark, and John. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, 1st Peter, Jude, James, and Revelation. That's their Bible. That is their Bible. Everything else they don't believe. So let's read about the book of Acts where they say, well, you know, Paul, Paul's a false apostle. Let's read Acts 13, and then we're going to go into some details. Verse 1, now there was in the church that was at Antioch. Now what's interesting is Antioch, the Bible says that Antioch is where they were first called Christians. Antioch is where we get our King James Bible manuscripts. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now Saul of Tarsus, his name was changed to Paul. A Herod, according to Josephus, the Jewish historian, the Herod family, you know, the Herod that uh, one of the Herod family that tried to kill Jesus as a ba and killed all the babies in Bethlehem? Yeah, that Herod. According to Josephus, the Herod family were Edomites. Now, if you haven't studied the um, War on Earth, War in Heaven series, the Edomites were intermarried with the Canaanites. They are a cursed family. All right. And Saul, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now, you deny Saul of Tarsus, whose name was changed to Paul. Take the book of Acts, rip it out of your Bible. Because the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. See, they want you to think that your Bible is wrong, and they're right. Yeah, everybody's been wrong for, oh, I don't know, 1,800 some odd years. And they're right. Paul's a false apostle, they'll tell you. But you know where this stuff comes from? It comes from people that use a dating system, BCE and CE. They don't use BC and AD. Uh, BC basically means before Christ, and AD means uh, Anno Domino, which is Latin for year of our Lord. You know, Jesus Christ, our Lord. BCE stands for Before the Common Era. CE means the Common Era, as if the birth of Christ was common. Right, that's what they want you to believe. The birth of Christ was just some common event. You know, there's thousands of babies born every day, and Jesus was just another one of them. BCE and CE. When you see that, you know you're dealing with an antichrist. Another place where this anti-Paul stuff comes from is from the Yeshua crowd. 
You see, there are over 5,000 manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. There are zero in Hebrew. There are zero in Aramaic. Zero. So where do they come off with this Yeshua stuff? Well, look in the Chu-ish encyclopedia. And Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, uh, means may his name be blotted out. And they put an A on the end of it, and they'll tell you that, well, that's that was his real name. You know, he was a Hebrew, and that was his Hebrew name, and they spoke Hebrew. Uh, really? And another thing, they'll start telling you about, well, you know, the... The, the Vatican just corrupted the scriptures and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you mean the Vatican, the people that burned people at the stake for having a Bible? Those people? Uh, yeah. And guess what? The head of the Spanish Inquisition was a guy named Torquenada. Guess what? He was a convert to Catholicism. Guess what his family line was? Uh, they were, you know, when your mouth chews, yeah, and rab eyes, yeah, that, he was a convert. And guess what, people? The head of the Spanish Inquisition, Torquenada, murdered Christians. If he caught you with a Bible, they killed you. They burned you at the stake for having a Bible, the New Testament. You know the people that died for their faith? I mean, Peter died for his faith. Andrew died for his faith. James died for his faith. Peter died for his faith. Paul died for his faith. What do these Paul haters do for their faith? Nothing. All they do is bash Paul. And they tell you, well, you know, the book of Acts is wrong because it, you know, it, it tells you about the story of Paul. You know, so they'll tell you the book of Acts is wrong. Basically, what they're doing is they run to these rab eyes and uh, who will tell you that the New Testament was mistranslated by those evil satanic Greeks who were a bunch of anti-Semites. And, you know, that's where all this garbage comes from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly where all this stuff comes from. And guess what, people? The Vatican? There's a group called the ADL. And, yes, they're a, a group of chews with the mouth. And they admit that the Vatican supports them. You know, just like Torquenada, the convert that burned people at the stake for uh, having a Bible. Do you know people died to give you the Bible? And most people won't even bother to even pick it up and read it. Wow. And, and, and this is the group that wants to tell you that Paul was a false apostle. So let's keep reading. Acts chapter 13, which they say is wrong and doesn't belong in the Bible because it, 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 it tells you that Paul is an apostle. Verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Paul for the work whereunto I have called them. Gee, the Holy Ghost, they want you to believe that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles that Paul was a false, evil, satanic, self-proclaimed apostle. Yeah, they want you to believe that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles about Paul being a faker. Verse 3, And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed under Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, 
and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a sorcerer, a wizard, a false prophet, a Chew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Do you know that's the Greek rendering for son of Jesus? This sorcerer, a false prophet, a Chew, whose name is Bar-Jesus. He claims to be the son of Jesus. Wow, I, my Bible doesn't record Jesus ever getting married and having kids. So this guy claims to be the son of Christ. Verse 7, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God, and Ilimos the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. Uh, some, some definitions say that Ilimos means wise. Others says, says it means deceiver and magician, sorcerer. Uh, so he was probably wise in the ways of witchcraft. That's probably what it means. But Elam asked the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Sounds just like the Paul haters. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh boy, the book of Acts is, is wrong. These Paul people will tell you, this is wrong. Paul's not a real apostle. Throw the book of Acts away. While you're at it, throw away the rest of the New Testament. After all, those satanic Greeks mistranslated the whole thing. You know, maybe Jesus didn't even exist. Uh, you know, this is the, this is, you know what? This bar Jesus character, this is where the Saul hating stuff comes from. Yep, this is where it is. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Oh, who's he talking to? Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Uh, the sorcerer, a false prophet, a chew. That's who Paul's talking to here. You know. Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. You see, Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. Paul here took one of the, someone he just called thou child of the devil and made him blind for a season. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believing, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Wow. Do you know Paul died for his faith? How many of these Yeshua people died for their faith? Zero. I say zero. Here, let's read uh, Acts chapter 9. Yeah, you know, and people will tell you, oh, well, this doesn't belong in the Bible because it tells you that Paul is an apostle. So let's read it. Acts chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, what way? The way of Christ, people. Whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about, round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, 
Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach? No. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Boy, that would really shake me up, huh? Hearing a voice, but there's no one there. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his, his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and, did, and neither did eat nor drink. Yeah, three days he was blind. Remember, Christ spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? Oh, yeah. You see, the Paul deniers will tell you the book of Acts is wrong. It doesn't belong in your Bible. Paul's a false apostle. Throw the book of Acts in the trash, people. Rip it out of your Bible. And while you're at it, throw out Galatians. Throw out Corinthians. Throw out Timothy. Throw out Titus. Throw out Philemon. Throw out Romans. While you're at it, you may as well throw out the book of Hebrews, too, because that was probably written by Paul, too. Throw them all in the garbage, they'll tell you. Remember, bar Jesus, the saucer. Where's all this garbage coming from? There you go. Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putteth, putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Ooh, so let's throw the book of Acts away, according to these Paul people, these, these Paul haters. The Lord says, For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, which... Another translation for that word is nations. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer. He must suffer for my name's sake. Yeah, Paul died for his faith. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. Why didn't the Holy Ghost tell everybody, gee, Paul's a false apostle. Why? You, you guys, you got to watch out for Saul. He's an infiltrator. And oh, by the way, people, in the, uh, when my mouth chews, and the Chew-ish Encyclopedia, it tells them, the tribe, to infiltrate the church, to destroy it from within. Can you say, bar Jesus, anybody? Oh, yeah. They tell them to do this. Infiltrate the church from within to destroy it. Where do you think this Paul-hating stuff comes from? Simple. And in verse 18, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it, it, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. 
and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. Amen to that. What are these what are these people that teach Yeshua and BCE and CE? What do they preach? Oh. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on, the, on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? That's right. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Who's behind all this hating Paul stuff? Take a guess. He confounded them, which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Yeah. Take a guess who's trying to discredit Paul. But their, lying, uh, uh, but their lying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Oh, yeah. You preach that Jesus stuff, boy. They'll kill you. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he assuaded himself, assuaded to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus, not Yeshua. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Wow. Yeah. So why did not the Holy Ghost warn the disciples here, when he had a perfect chance to tell them, Paul's a false apostle. You know why he didn't, the Holy Ghost didn't tell Paul, them, the apostles, that Paul was a false apostle? Because he was a real apostle. You see, to deny Paul is to deny the book of Acts. Period. Let's go to 2 Peter. All right, let's go to 2 Peter verse chapter 3 and verse 7. I don't want to read the whole thing, but you'll get the idea. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, what word? The word of God. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now I want to make a note here. Uh, according to Bible scholars that have traced the genealogies and what a generation is, the earth is approximately 6,000 years old. Now, a bi biblical year would probably be 360 days. But our calendar is 365.25 days. Uh, you know, 365 and a quarter days. That's why every fourth year you have a leap day. So according to the um, Jews, um, their calendar is approximately 5,700 and something or other um, years. So the earth is approximately 6,000 years. Well, guess what? The six... On, uh, if a day is a thousand years and a thousand years a day, we're getting close to the end of the sixth day in the sight of the Lord. And guess what? The seventh day is the Sabbath. Now, there is a thousand years of rest. It's called, commonly in biblical terms, they call it the millennium. 
millennial means thousand and uh, it's a Latin term you know English is about 20% Latin at least that's what I had an English professor tell me or a Latin professor in college uh, but not Bible college I went to Bible college too but regular secular college I went to junior college for two years okay uh, we are approaching the end of the sixth day the seventh day is going to be the Sabbath a thousand years of rest Satan's going to be bound and then after that he's going to be loosed you can read about that in Revelation now if you want to read about that you can it's in the um, uh, Revelation chapter 20 uh, in verse 7 it says and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison all right so my opinion is that uh, 6,000 years Christ comes back we have a thou we have a year of uh, a thousand years for a Sabbath of rest so I don't know verse 8 uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 oh by the way uh, Paul deniers will tell you that Peter did not write second Peter it's fake oh yeah Verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Does this sound like a false book to you? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. What works? The evil works that are, uh, that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Yeah, the, the, why is there going to be a new heaven and a new earth? Because the old one's going to burn up. All this wicked garbage is going to burn up. Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Wow. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Wow, Paul's a brother. Oh, wait a minute, that's right. Second Peter doesn't belong in the Bible. It's fake, is what they'll tell you. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. That's right. Some of the things Paul writes are hard to understand. I mean, I don't, I don't claim to understand, you know, but Paul, Paul sat at the feet of Gamaliel. I have actually read Gamaliel, some of his writings. That guy was a a scholar of the Old Testament. He knew the scriptures. Some of his writings were, I was impressed. Now, there was more than one Gamaliel, but uh, according to legend, Gamaliel became a Christian. So the you-know-whos disowned him. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. 
which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You don't like Paul? Maybe you don't like the one that sent Paul. Who is Jesus? I mean, seriously, people, Paul wrote probably a third or better of the New Testament. You know, the book of Acts, you got to throw away the book of Acts. You got to throw away 2 Peter. You got to throw away all of Paul's writings. What's left? Nothing, almost. Throw away the book of Luke, too, because Luke was the one that probably wrote the book of Acts. So throw that away, too. What do you got? Matthew, Mark, and John. James. Revelation. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and Jude. That's your, that's your Bible. New Testament. Really? Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, and grow in grace. See, without Paul, where's the grace? Oh, and by the way, these Paul haters, they always want to get you to, under the law. You know what? Before you, before you end up, when you end up hating Paul, you're going to end up hating Jesus. You're going to use Yeshua. You're going to use BCE for your dating and B C uh, uh, C E, and you'll become a Noahide. Where are the laws of Noah in the Bible? They don't exist. They only exist in the mind of the rabid rab eyes. That's where the, you know, you'll end up being a Yeshuaite, keeping laws, no grace, and you'll end up being a Noahide. I mean, that's just, that's the way it is. There's no grace. Oh, you got to keep the laws. You got to believe in Yeshua and keep the law to be saved. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And if you think I'm being harsh, man, I tell you what, when people start telling me that my Bible's wrong, you know, people died to give me this Bible. People died to give me this Bible. The apostles died. The only apostle that didn't die for his faith was John on the Isle of Patmos that wrote the book of Revelation. He was the only apostle that didn't get killed for his faith in Christ. The only one. All the rest of them died for their faith. What do these Paul haters do? Do they die for their faith? No. No. They don't. All they do is try to destroy our faith in the book of Acts, Second Peter, and the rest of Paul's writings. I, you know, that's why I don't trust anybody tells me they're a messianic. What's the matter? You're ashamed to be called a Christian? That's right. They're not Christians. Remember that, people. They're not Christians, or they would call themselves Christians. Remember, bar Jesus. That's who they are. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world and his heavenly Father, Jesus, who is Christ. In his blessed name, amen.